start fifth grade over. So I got to wait for next fifth grade year. So now they finally allow me to go to the school in my neighborhood, in my town. So now most of the kids in this town go to the school. So I already have a reputation in my town and it'll probably mean less fights. That's how I looked at it. It's my town. We all in the same hood. Most of us, you know, it's going to be, of course, it's going to be new dudes from different sides of the hood that we don't interact with that much. But for all the same, you know, it is what it is. So when you get to the school, I'm so happy they finally let me, you know, go to school in my town. So get to the school. Some bullshit happened. A lot of bullshit happened. Few fights. Not as many. I had a nice amount, but not a lot because now I'm in my like hometown hood. So a lot of people wouldn't try me. Most of the fights I got into was someone basically trying to say like, man, Q really not all lit. Like ain't nobody scared of him. That used to be the big thing. Like you get a reputation for like beating people up or something like that. Then somebody go, oh, you scared of Q. You wouldn't say it to Q. And then what happens is your goofy ass go, ain't nobody scared of him. So now you got to prove something by fighting me. Because of some shit somebody else told you because you gave a fuck so much about what other people think about you instead of giving a fuck about yourself. Now, I get it. You're a deity and I'm okay with that. You're supposed to go through this shit. This is what you learn. So them the few motherfuckers that want to fight. One of them, my mama saw the fight. They got so mad because I kept whooping ass with every time I got checked. All of them came together like the little guys didn't like me. I didn't kick it with the little guys. I kicked it with the big guys. So the little kids didn't like me. But I got, you know, respect or whatever. And I guess the little kids that kick it together didn't like that shit. So they end up jumping on me or whatever. It was a whole ordeal. Then I fought them. My mama saw that. My mama had already heard about me. My mama came and checked me one time. She was like, you know, letting me know. Like she heard some things about like my mama, a grown ass woman, hearing stories about how her son is out here fucking shit up. And she told me like when people that scared of you, they'll kill you. So I had to take that in consideration. It really stuck with me. You know, I had people that try to tell me things and help me that really stuck with me. But you got to take that into consideration because what happens is they keep being scared of you. Then somebody goes, oh, I'm not going to be scared of him. So they're going to fight that. They're going to fight that type of feeling of fear. And I'm going to represent that. So they're going to come try to fight me. And then when I whoop their ass, then they fail. That shit hurt. Nobody's going to want to sit there and just be defeated. No one's just going to sit there and be like, yeah, if there's not a way for me to win, you may not be the strongest. You may not be the best, but you're going to find a way to survive. You're going to find a way to win. Look at how many people make money off NBA players. Like one NBA player hires so many people and then all these people talk about him and write stories about him. Just him. Look how many people made money because of his ability. They can't play basketball as well as LeBron. But it's motherfuckers that can't do what he do make more money than him. But that's a whole nother thing we can get into probably more in season two. So few fights I have is like that. And then I keep whooping everybody ass. So now it becomes motherfuckers got so scared. And our version as kids, well, for a limited time, our version as kids for like gang members, what they do, they kill each other. But like as kids, we would fight. So if you couldn't fight me, you couldn't beat me one on one. The next level, like our version of shooting, was jumping on you. So, like, get a bunch of other kids and you jump on them. And that happened to fall upon me. And then it came down to a way of let's fight one-on-one then. And then the dude that started it all because of, you know, whatever happened. And we had the, you know, people of the neighborhood. It was like a whole ordeal. Now we got a whole crowd. Since y'all want to jump me and you think they don't got my back too. So it was not like they can run to the gang and be like, hey, him. No, it wasn't like that with me. I don't kick it with y'all. <laughs> so it's OK. Well, y'all want to jump them one on one or we going to violate you because you shouldn't have jumped them. So I'm like, let's do the one on one because it was my option. You want them to get violated as kids. And I haven't told y'all the story about that violation that changed my life that I saw. It was, oh, it was blood everywhere. That's I might tell that in season two. So it was get them violated or I'll fight one-on-one. I'll fight one-on-one. I told you, and when it come down to fear of faith and that fear trying to bully me, I'm going to always fight. Every time I'm going to fight. There's an easier option. 
I'll fight. That option ain't for me. I don't do nothing. If you do something to me and I come back with a bunch of people and jump on you, what did I actually gain back? I still lost. I told you I'm very competitive. So I wasn't on the jump and stuff. I got that actually in the song, a nice long verse where I kill it. In my opinion, I think it's one of the coldest verses. Like, not just that I made, just period. Yeah, I'm that confident in my verse. <laughs> but in the song, I say, I ain't on that jump shit. You better try to run quick if one of my guys punch your ass out like the culprit. Switch from that offense, get them on some defense. Yeah, I got shot, but turn the bullet into pieces. I know it was Jesus, divine intervention. So when I got popped, God was getting my attention. So I had to listen. It'd be dumb to do otherwise. Other guys go through the same and want a fucking prize. Mesmerized by a lifestyle that they don't understand. Come on, man, you hustling. Still ain't got a couple grand. I might be a jerk, but you niggas is dummies. Like, but don't have me getting into it. Like, cause I spit it, goddammit. And I got a hole in my mouth. And I still spit that shit. Um, so anyway, I'm like, I'll fight. And I beat the sh- Oh, I don't like to really talk about all my victories. Cause I feel like, you know, a lot of people are losers. Let's be real. A lot of people we lose and we only focus on our losses a lot. So that's why I'm trying to help you see all the wins that you have also. Your losses don't define you. Every loss, there's a win, and every win, there's a loss. Everything has to have a reflection. So I'm just trying to show you that. So I don't really want to talk about in detail how, you know, because I remember those details, too. Don't think I just remember the bad stuff details. No, I remember the good stuff details, too. Like, while I'm whooping this dude badly, (laughs) I'm beating his ass. And my mama is even out there. We got the whole crowd. We got the, you know, the guys, the gangs, the families. Like, it was families over there. People, cousins came to watch this fight. It was an event. And we had, like, this little square concrete in the back of the little clubhouse of the game. And I did them dirty. Remember I told you I got different ways that I used to fight? Like, if I fuck you up, like, I'll beat the shit at you. Like, I tell somebody, like, I'll beat the shit at you. That was a certain way I was going to fight you. Like, I was going to fight you and try to really hurt you. Like, hurt you. Then I'd be like, I knock you out. I think that's self-explanatory. Like people I've knocked the fuck out. Like I, I tell them I'm going to knock you out. I'm a man of my word. And I knock them the fuck out. I don't stop until I knock them out. Cause that was what I said I was going to do. And I had this other thing, which was more humiliating. I used to call it packing you up. So when I pack you up, that means that we got into a whatever altercation and I feel that the fight isn't just to beat you up. Because in my mind, I'm so confident, I know I'm going to beat you up. But you must have tried to embarrass me. So I'm going to embarrass you. And I would just hit you, not too hard, but just keep hitting you enough to where they sting. And I'm hitting you so many times that you don't like get knocked out. You don't even get beat real bad. It's just me hitting you a lot and everybody's watching. Yeah, so with Baby J, I packed him up. But with these packups, I was hitting him a little harder than normal simply because these motherfuckers just jumped on me. My ear was bleeding. <laughs> that was all that was wrong. Just my ear was bleeding. And while I'm packing, I'm, and every time I hit him, like the punches was echoing off the alley. And the hits was so, like every time I contact, it was pow, pow. Like it was like loud smacks. Every time I punched him, air punch was clean. And I just hit my mom in the background going, oh, oh, <laughs> my mom was so motherfucking overdramatic. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. That was the greatest motivation of all times. I've never been motivated that strongly. Hearing my mom in the background with those, oh, every time, I, like I heard on every punch, it's, oh, like, dude, that's what was getting the fucked up more. Because I'm like, I, I got to make sure every punch hit hard so I can hit my mama go, oh. As a kid, you're still a kid. You're still of that parent vibration. You still seek that approval no matter what. That's why it's always there. It's no matter what is of creation. So anyway, I'm in a school where I don't have to have as many fights kind of known, but it's more so to myself because the way that I would stand out in so many schools was because so many fights. But in this one, not really a lot of fights, just at some point because I'm to myself. I don't really talk to too many people. I was a little bit of a class clown. Um, They kind of got hit. That was like fifth grade. A motherfucker thought I said something gang related when I was making some joke. But it seemed like it was just bullshit to fuck with me because I was new. But I wasn't going to get bullied. So it was a whole ordeal. He had said some sick, slick shit. His name was Derek. And he was like the dude. That motherfucker was like, oh, he the popular. He's like Derek was the most popular guy. So it was like my version of Kenny. He was light-skinned, though. Um, Derek was light-skinned. And 
I'm looking like, oh, yeah, give me a reason to fuck you up. Because I'm going to give you the ass whooping Kenny should have got. But he kind of, like, kept his distance from me. We never got into an altercation. Even when I almost fucked his little sister. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway. Anyway. That ain't the story we talking about. I might tell that story. <laughs> oh, that was tough for your boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I might. Season two. I might tell that story. Um, that kind of nipped my class clown in the bud. That's when I, like, retired being a class clown. So I was more so just chilling really got into focus on basketball like our basketball team at this school was real good like we was real good what i think we call ourselves the dynasty or something it was me greg buddha um uh, smurf uh hakeem um darius was on the team like we had like y'all don't know none of these people i'm just saying their names <laughs> but we had a nice whip like our basketball team was real good and i love basketball i told you i had aspirations squirrel built me my first ever crate I ain't want to let squirrel down. I'm going to make it to the NBA is what I thought. So I was really into basketball. So that's what I was really known for. Just talk a little bit in practice. And then when you're on a team, you kind of talk to the basketball team a little bit. But the basketball players were popular and I wasn't popular. You know, I wasn't I didn't have a lot. So I didn't really try to mix in with the popular kids. I felt like I didn't fit, you know, because like even if um yeah, everybody know you, everybody know us, everybody know this. But what happens when y'all like, oh, we going to this dance. I can't afford to go to this dance. Well, we want we going to catch the bus and do this. We're going to all go buy this. I can't afford to do that. So motherfuckers didn't know why I was more well known and not being popular when all I really wanted to do was make people laugh and be friends with people. It wasn't no situation of I'm just so hostile. It was a lot of situations that happened that made me feel stupid if I didn't respond in hostility because if you're going to bully me anyway whatever form of bully it is why not choose to fight so for me I would just choose to fight and didn't want to get embarrassed by kicking it with popular kids because the other part of being popular is having things that others don't you know like you, you always get the new Jordans you always got some nice outfit you always smell good or something like your mama or some work <laughs> or some shit like that. So that was the real reason why I kind of kept away from being popular. So I kind of kept to myself, but I was still like, I'm a introvert that knows how to express myself as an extrovert so well that you would think I was one. But actually, I, you know, I'm more like to kick it to myself. I've observed certain horrors that I've seen from humans just to see the capabilities of that. To see how people trade on you and don't value your love. People will try to hurt you for frivolous reasons. People that you actually sacrifice things for will watch you be hurt or even set you up to be hurt. So for me, I like to observe things first and see who I'm interacting with so I can respond in kind because I'm capable of whatever response I need. I'm just trying to make sure I do the right one because making the wrong decision on how to respond can fuck you up. Or get you fucked up. So. Popular kids will be popular. I just be cute. I hoop. Then we got flag football. I think 7th or 8th grade. No it was 8th grade year. That was my first time playing football. They gave me defensive player of the year. And didn't give me MVP. And I was pissed off. And my coach going to tell me. The quarterback has to get the MVP. I played safety and wide receiver. I was doing everything for that flag football team. I was, oh, you should see how angry I was. When they called defensive player of the year, I didn't even walk on stage. No, you're not going to tell me as I knew I was the MVP. Everybody knew I was the MVP, but because I wasn't the quarterback, I can't, oh, I ain't like that, but I digress. But anyway, that was just me. I thought I was living a cool three years of grammar school life. You know, girls was, but that was the tough part. That even in this school where I don't have to fight as much and things like that, I still had to deal with the girls. Girls are still calling me ugly and things like that. Making me, like not making me feel because you don't have that power, but listening to things you say and listening to things they said, it made me feel so small. So it was tough. Like I even wrote a song called Girl I Really Like You, which I still think is fire to this day about liking a girl. And it didn't work. <laughs> somebody pointed out they said all your songs you tried to get girls back you didn't get the girls back i don't think you rap that good petty 
That's petty to tell me that, <laughs> but hilarious. Good job. That was a good get me. I like that. I like good shit talking, but the girls would do me dirty and I would kind of stay away from them because it wasn't a concept of girl, I beat your brother up, your boyfriend up. Cause I probably know them niggas and they probably cool with me. So you just get away with talking shit and I ain't got no male family members of yours that I want to beat up because one, I don't got to fight Two, I'm not trying to look to fight. And three, I might be cool with this motherfucker and fighting the wrong motherfucker. You might, you know, go into a situation where they try to kill you. And now you in a situation where you trying to survive. You see what I'm saying? So it's a different experience in my hood. I told you my hood was the trenches. It was crazy children. I wasn't the only one. So, yeah, so the girls would just get away with that shit. And, I mean, it wasn't even that tough. It just happened. I kind of just dealt with it because I'm not going to hit a girl. 